Thanks to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video and offering my viewers 83% off and three extra months for free. More about that at the end. And now over to Manuel Alazic, a film writer and host of a new podcast called You Gotta Act, where she talks to film industry professionals about the art of on-screen performance. It's rare for a serial killer film to feature not one, but two murderous protagonists. And also to be remembered for the government agent trying to protect society from them. Good afternoon. Um, sorry to bother you. Perhaps Anthony Hopkins' Hannibal Lecter is the most indelible character from Jonathan Demme's The Silence of the Lambs, with his iconic line deliveries and particular culinary taste. I ate his liver with some fava beans a nice Chianti. But Jodie Foster's Clarice Starling is the heroine that gives Lecter something to play with. Both for the psychiatrist killer and for the audience, she remains one of the most complex and captivating characters of the thriller genre. If Lecter's potential appetite for the young woman is perplexing, his curiosity about her is understandable. Clarice is a mystery and an exception. As an FBI trainee, she is one of very few women in Quantico. From his opening sequence, Demi translates both her seeming vulnerability and her fighting spirit. A small figure climbing massive obstacles in her grey tracksuit, she looks like a mouse determined to make it to the end of the labyrinth alive. When duty calls, Clarice shows the same focus. Instead of taking this as an opportunity to cool off, she runs straight to her boss. Unshowered, she walks with determination through the FBI offices, where men look at her with a mixture of surprise, derision, and discomfort. You looking for Crawford? Yes, sir. Well, he should be back in a couple minutes. Why don't you wait in his office? Okay. And then, uh, Demi's camera, almost hovering over Clarice, emphasizes her small size, but also her assurance. Clarice is a fighter, and a serious one. She puts her work first. Foster gives Clarice the poise that comes with professionalism and ambition. A double major, psych and criminology, graduated magna, summer internships at the Reisinger Clinic. It says here, when you graduate, you want to come to work for me in behavioral science. Yes, very much, sir. Very much. If these qualities were all that defined her, Clarice wouldn't make for a very interesting character. But before the plot gets going, we can already see hints of a hidden depth in Foster's performance, buried underneath this almost robotic composure. Foster's eyes are just a little too wide open, a little too alert. And Clarice's dedication to her work feels more obsessive than it should be, even for an aspiring FBI agent. You're one of Jack Crawford's, aren't you? I am, yes. May I see your credentials? Luckily for us, Clarice soon starts exploring her tormented mind with a psychiatrist. Hello, sir. Dr. Lecter looks at her eyes as though they truly were the windows to the soul. Demi began using his iconic centered, direct-to-camera shots in earlier films, but it is here that the technique's potential is truly fulfilled. Through this unusual angle, he makes the criminal stare not only at Clarice, but at the viewer too. As the young woman also gazes at Lecter, the audience is caught in this staring contest and gets to see them as similarly entranced with each other. But like any terrible and psychopathic therapist, Lecter concludes his first meeting with Clarice by a little character assassination. You're so ambitious, aren't you? Do you know what you look like to me with your good bag and your cheap shoes? You look like a rube. Throwing assumptions at her, his intent is to see which of them strike a chord in the young woman. Good nutrition's given you some length of bone, but you're not more than one generation from poor white trash, are you, Agent Starling? Lecter is proceeding by elimination and provocation to crack Clarice's impeccable facade and destabilize her. And already, he discovers something about her. She is running away from a difficult past. All those tedious, sticky fumblings in the backseats of cars while you could only dream of getting out. Getting anywhere, getting all the way to the end of the puppy. 
she is also trying to recapture aspects of it. Right after this first encounter, Clarice flashes back to a childhood memory, which Demi incorporates seamlessly into his film, as though this past moment was still, somehow, part of the present. Daddy! Hey, Clarice. Oh, like father, like daughter, Clarice's dad was a town marshal. She may be trying to forget her past, but she carries it with her every day by being an agent of the law. My mother died when I was very young, so... My father had become the whole world to me, and uh, when he left me, I had nothing. I was 10 years old. <laughs> what first looked like dedication in Clarice very quickly reveals itself to be a reckless compulsion, coming ever closer to that glass wall. Risking getting trapped in a serial killer's old storage facility, Staring at the mutilated and putrid corpse of one of Buffalo Bill's victims, Clarice always seems at once terrified and helplessly curious. Star-shaped contact entrance wound over the uh, sternum. Lecter understands this very well. Foster's bewildered and yet intense gaze is that of someone determined to not only face fear, but to seek it out and overcome it. The psychiatrist, of course, gets to the root of this risk-taking impulse. How did you feel when you saw him, Clarice? Scared at first, then accelerated. The one time Clarice ran away from fear, it won. Suddenly, she was alone and powerless. And retelling the story to Lecter, she finally abandons her mask of toughness. You think if you save poor Catherine, you could make them stop, don't you? You think if Catherine lives, you won't wake up in the dark ever again to that awful screaming of the lambs. I don't know. I don't know. She is training so hard in Quantico, taking on such a dangerous case and putting herself in so much peril because she never wants to let fear rule over her again, either in the present moment or in her recurring dreams. The climactic scene of the film puts Clarice in the scariest situation she's ever been in and recalls the night she escaped from the ranch. Abandoned by her boss, in the dark and trying to save another creature yet again, this time around she doesn't run away, even if it would be advisable. Instead, she seeks Buffalo Bill, even when she can't see him. Everything seems to have led up to this moment, and when the time comes, she is ready. Whether this confrontation with terror cured Clarice of her thirst for risk remains to be seen. If anything, this success could convince her that recklessness is worthwhile and turn her into a dangerously rebellious FBI agent. But the film neither condones nor condemns her behavior. Starling. Although she's caught Buffalo Bill, Lecter is still out there to remind her of the fears she confessed to him. His promise that he would never hurt her is also a sword of Damocles hanging over her head. The world may be more interesting with her in it, because Clarice gives Lecter something to be obsessed about, and, in turn, so does Lecter to Clarice. If you're now in the mood to watch the Hannibal Lecter series, well, currently Netflix US is showing Silence of the Lambs, and Netflix UK, where I am, has Ridley Scott's Hannibal. But if you want to watch both, you're going to need to use a VPN. That's one of the great functions of this video sponsor, Surfshark. By simply changing your location, you can access 15 different Netflix libraries. Surfshark also gives you the added peace of mind you get from a VPN when using the internet, protecting you from data theft, tracking, surveillance, and commercial targeting. They also have the malware and ad blocker CleanWeb, which means you can enjoy the internet seamlessly without constant interruptions. One of the frustrations I've had with other VPNs I've used are issues that arise with certain apps. I have to turn it off when I want to use my email client. But Surfshark has a great function called Whitelister, which adds exceptions to certain sites or apps, whilst everything else benefits from the VPN. It completely solved that problem for me. So if you use my code discarded, you can get 83% off plus three extra months free. The link is in the description. 
and Surfshark offer a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk in trying it out.